Hello, in this video, I will explain to you on how to solve this problem. And our goal is to find out the node voltages at 1, 2, and 3. So our goal is find out what is V1 here, and then V2, and then V3. And we need to use nodal analysis. Nodal analysis. Okay, and the first thing that we need to do is to label all the nodes label all the nodes and we will have nodes number one here so the voltage in this nodes number one is v1 i'm on more comfortable using the voltage notation here and the node two here i also have the voltage here is equal to v2 and here in the node three the voltage here is equal to v3 and here we have our reference node or our down. so this is our reference node or our ground and here the voltage in this node here is equal to zero good and i think we have label all the nodes and the second thing that we need to do is to assume the currents direction assume the currents direction okay usually what i do is for the horizontal component i go to the right like this and goes to the right like this and for the vertical component i goes down like that however for the branch with the current sources i just follow the arrow of the current sources so this one will be goes up and this one goes to the left here However, we have one dependent current source and it depends on Ix. So we need to find out what is Ix here. What is Ix? Let's see here. Ix is the current that passed through this 4 ohm resistor and we can calculate that using Ohm's law. Remember the Ohm's law, the voltage divided by the resistance. And what is the voltage? Here we will have P2 where the current came from minus 0 where the current goes to and divided by the resistance between them so that will be 4 or in conclusion ix is equal to v2 over 4 good and now what we need to do next is we need to do kcl at all unknown nodes do kcl for all unknown nodes Okay, here we have three unknown nodes, right? P1, P2, and P3. Okay, let's do it one by one. The first thing that we need to do is we need to do KCL at PI, P1. KCL at P1 here. And KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out, right? And here the only current that goes into v1 is 4 ampere right because that is coming from a current source so i have 4 here and then that will equal to this current here and we need to calculate that using Ohm's law where the current comes from is v1 and then where the current goes to is v2 so i have v1 minus v2 divided by the resistance between them which is 3 good and then here we will have the second current that goes out, which is this one. And that will be P1, where the current comes from. And then minus V3, where the current goes to. And divide that by the resistance between them. So I'll have 2 here. Okay, we need to multiply both sides here by 6. Good. And 4 times 6 is 24. Okay, and then 3 and 6 will cancel into 2, so I'll have 2v1 and then minus 2v2. And then here we'll have 2 and 6 cancel into 3, so I'll have 3v1 and then minus 3v3. Good, 2 plus 3 is 5, so we'll have 5v1. Okay, and then v2 only came from here, so we'll have minus 2v2. And then we also have minus 3v3. 
and all of that will equal to 24 and let's save this as equation number one because nothing that we can do from here good now let's do kcl but this time at v2 now let's do kcl at v2 and again kcl said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out right and there are two currents that goes in right this one and that one here this one here is v1 minus v2 divided by 3 and then this one here is 4ix so i will have plus 4ix but ix is v2 over 4 so we will have v2 over 4 here v2 over 4 because this is ix and then that will equal to the current that goes out which is this one here and that will be v2 minus 0 okay v2 minus 0 and then divided by 4 okay i think we can multiply both sides here by 12 right so i'll have 12 to get rid all of the denominator here Okay, so here on the left hand side, 3 and 12 will cancel into 4. So we have 4v1 and then minus 4v2. And then 4 and 4 will cancel each other, but we need to multiply it by 12. So I will have plus 12v2. And here I will have this one here. What is this? v2 over 4 so we will have 4 and 12 cancel into 3 so we'll have 3 v2 okay so now we will have 4 v1 here and then minus 4 plus 12 that will be plus 8 but plus 8 minus 3 that will be plus 5 yeah plus 5 v2 plus 5 v2 and that will equal to zero and this is our second equation so now so far we have two equation but we have three variables we need one more equation which can we get from kcl at v3 however our slide is full maybe let's clean up it first okay now let's do kcl but this time at v3 kcl at v3 okay and then KCL said that the sum of the current that goes in will equal to the sum of the current that goes out, right? And what is the current that goes in? Only this current here. And that current will be V1 minus V3. V1 is where the current came from and V3 is where the current goes to, right? Divided by the resistance between them, that will be 2 ohm, okay? And that will equal to the current that goes out, which is this one here. But that one is 4ix. So we'll have 4ix, but ix is v2 over 4. So we'll have v2 over 4 here. Let's plug that in. And then this current also goes out. So we'll have v3 minus 0 divided by 6. Good. Now we can multiply both sides here by 12 to get rid all of the denominator. 2 and 12 will cancel into 6. So I have 6v1 minus 6v3. Okay. And that will equal to 4 and 4 will cancel each other. So we we'll have 12v2. Okay. And then 6 and 12 will cancel into 2. So we we'll have plus 2v3. Good. And now we will have 6v1 and then minus 12v2. Okay, and then we will have minus 6 minus 2. That will be minus 8v3. All of that will equal to 0. And let's have this as equation number 3. Good. And now we have 3 equations and 3 variables. All we need to do is to solve the equation. Of the equations using linear algebra right however i think the fastest way to do it is just by using calculator right so let's set up our calculator here i will have my casio fx 570 
and then we need to set this up here as what's it as equation solver so this button and then number five and three variables is number two and all we need to do is to plug in all the coefficients so i'll have five and then minus two here and then minus three and that will equal to 24 right in the equation one good and then equation number two however we have to be very careful because we have zero v3 here so we have four v1 and then five v2 and then zero v3 and that will equal to zero good and then here we will have this equation number three i will have six and then minus 12 and then minus eight and that will equal to zero and our x value will be our p1 right so i will have p1 here is 32 so we'll have p1 here is 32 volt which is our first goal and then the second goal is to find out p2 which is the y value here and i will have minus 25.6 volt okay and then the third value is the z value or the z value i will have 62.4 volt and i think we have achieved our goal here to find out p1 p2 and p3 hopefully i did not make any mistakes in my calculation thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye